Setar Freeman with us is with us, CEO and Chief Investment Officer of EM Capital in, uh, Management. Thank you so much for st uh, joining us and going, staying through that report. Uh, Mr. Freeman, how important was this debate for the capital markets in the U.S.? Well, I guess we'll see a little more in the morning hmm. about how important it was. Uh, personally, I didn't think it was as uh, uh, animated um, as I would have ex expected. Um, you know, Mrs. Clinton has tremendous experience in debates like this. I didn't really expect Donald Trump to be able to hold it together for a whole 90 minutes. Mm. And uh, my expectations uh, were correct in terms of the second half, mm. you know, bringing up a whole bunch of extraneous information that has nothing to do with uh, policy or politics. Um, uh, we still have a lot of time before the election, and we all have to remember that whether it's India uh, or the United States, that ultimately uh, presidents and prime ministers can have as many slogans as they like. Uh, implementation requires uh, gaining the cooperation of, of uh, other houses within the government. So uh, whoever wins is going to have the same kind of uh, implementation challenges. Um, in your own experience, uh, have you ever seen a presidential candidate actually uh, attack the Fed directly? I was watching this debate and uh, Donald Trump did it again, saying that Janet Yellen is uh, a political Fed chairman. Yeah, you know, um, it, those kinds of lines just have no credibility uh, whatsoever. Um, I, I've had the opportunity to uh, meet her. She's got to be one of the most intelligent people I've ever met. And uh, she's the least political when it comes to this. She's a scientist, mm. and um, basically. So it's just, it's just foolhardy to carry on that kind of... Who, which, what constituency is Trump trying to target when he says that this is a political Fed, it's deliberately not raising interest rates, and uh, once it raises interest rates, the entire equity markets will come collapsing. Who is he trying to target? What constituency? Um, you know, I'm not sure because the irony about it is that low interest rates are good for consumers, uh, bad for banks, but good for us who, who like to borrow. You know, it reduces our mortgage rates. It reduces our car loan rates. Uh, it does hurt. It, it very much does hurt, though, people who are on pensions and dependent on, you know, interest and interest from their savings uh, to live, retirees. Mm. Uh, and so that's a problem. But, but uh, uh, I, I really don't know who he's trying to appeal to, frankly. Okay, uh, you're talking about low interest rates hurting banks. And I was trying to find out any uh, write-up or any commentary on why Goldman... Uh, cracked yesterday, went down 2%, other financials went down 2%. Uh, and uh, more or less the commentary seemed to suggest that it's a, it's a contagion from what has happened to Deutsche Bank. Is that all it is or is there something deeper that is happening right now? Um, I'm not aware of anything specifically deeper. They came out and said that they were going to be reducing uh, staff in Asia mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the trading revenue was way down. Uh, I know that Goldman Sachs has recently been starting to go back into the distressed asset business and looking for other business. I saw a pretty funny um, headline. It was Goldman Sachs, and the Sachs was spelled S-A-C-K-S, as in sacking staff. Right. So it, it might just be sentiment driven. Mm -hmm. uh, how seriously are you taking, you know, the in sense, the collapse in the stock price of Deutsche Bank. It went down 7%. It seems to be something that, is, that affects a single bank. But could it lead to a contagion that we saw in the past, that one bank is short of capital and others don't want to lend, lend them? What they normally do, they uh, suspend. Um, I don't think so. I think this is really isolated at this moment to Deutsche Bank. Mm. Um, you know, and, and I think really the big issue is the fact that... that uh, Merkel and, and the German state has indicated they don't intend to support the bank. Mm. You know, this is a very large bank, and um, I would actually be surprised that it, it would collapse 
in this kind of environment. Um, the stress tests and other kinds of measures being taken to uh, make sure that, that banks generally or uh, have enough capital has been relatively successful. Okay, uh, you know, sitting here, we find it very confusing. Uh, the U.S. is one of the economies that actually issues data very regularly. And you see monthly and weekly data, and every day the new data that seems to come in seems to contradict what came in earlier. So one month you have record new home sales, and next month, you see that the new home sales uh, have slumped and therefore those stocks are selling off. What is really happening on the ground? How does one read through this very conflicting data? Uh, you've raised a really good point. And in fact, what happens is most of the data that comes out, that's headline data, uh, ends up getting revised uh, somewhere between 30 and, and 90 days later. And the press generally doesn't report the revised numbers. Uh, I would say that it's, that, uh, it's possible that some of the headline numbers uh, are politicized and they're certainly jumped on by the press. Uh, the, the biggest issue is that we don't have, in essence, a homogeneous situation across the United States. Mm. And so we have pockets, uh, and somewhat large pockets, in terms of uh, the wealth creation in the Bay Area and in the East Coast, but we do have a, a huge swaths of the Midwest uh, and the central part of the, of the, the country. Mm. Uh, jobs that have been gained since the reception, uh, recession pay lower wages mm. and so forth. So we don't have, we don't have an even kind of uh, economic growth. Mm. And I, I, w that's one of the things we see. Um, and the other thing that, that's not clear is on the increase in housing starts is a little misleading. It's, it's generally been an increase in apartments uh, mm. housing, not single family housing. Mm. And that's quite different than we've historically seen. Mm. You know, I was uh, watching an interview with uh, one of the housing experts, uh, long back an American housing expert, almost a year ago, and he was saying that uh, the nature of demographics, the nature of jobs, the fact that people have mo started moving, younger people have started working one day in Boston, next day in San Francisco, uh, that has actually reduced the number of uh, new home buying. So they're not buying homes, but rentals have started going up. Uh, is that continuing? Is that process continuing? Is that a demographic change as well? Well, there's tremendous demand for rentals in uh, prime markets, and rents have skyrocketed on both coasts. Uh, the housing situation from a percentage of income is, has gone crazy. You know, even though uh, young programmers at, an, at a technology company or internet company may be earning uh, 95000 or $120,000 a year right out of college, they're probably spending about 40 to 50 percent of their income on housing. And one of the big problems is you need to have a 10 to 20 percent minimum down payment. It's very difficult to accumulate that kind of money um, given how much you have to spend on your current housing. But uh, one of the downsides of the sustained low mortgage rates, for example, uh, you can get a 30-year mortgage here for around 3.5, 3.2% with uh, about 20% down. Mm. That has been sustained, but it's actually historically uh, uh, unusual. Rates used to be closer to 5, 6, 7%. Mm. So these low rates have allowed uh, housing prices to rise very rapidly just because the buying power of uh, low interest rates has allowed that to happen. Mm. And it, it, it creates serious long-term problems. Mm. Mm. Uh, in terms of uh, b consumption on the ground, you did mention that uh, you know, there are geographical differences across the right. U.S. Now, um, again, I'm asking you a, a quasi-political question here. Are we going to see discontent much more in the parts where there has been uh, you know, slow recovery and perhaps a more uh, you know, blasé or a, uh, less interest in the political upheavals in the places where recovery has been faster? Um, you know, surprisingly, 
um, we, we have kind of a quiet kind of discontent where people are grumbling. They're not able to consume like they used to. And savings rates are relatively low. Um, but in general, there's a lot of passive, passive passiveness. The, um, we just had some headlines recently about how the average income has gone up 5% in our country. But if you look below the headline, you'll see that most of those increases were from relatively low wages to begin with. We have a country that's historically been driven by a middle class. And most of the middle class, not unlike you see in India or Mexico, the middle class growth has sort of stalled out. And people at the next segment higher are doing way better than they were before while the middle class is having a tough time with growth. What we don't have in our economy is uh, an increase in productivity. And that's holding back the economy. And in essence, it's, it's going to be continue to hold back uh, job growth as well. So if you had to give a, d a diagnosis of what the American economy is at, would you say that uh, it is ripe for interest rates to go up? Or you think that the Fed should hold and continue to hold rates where they are for now? Well, the Fed has a couple targets that it's looking at, mm. uh, primarily inflation mm. and unemployment. Mm. And the way unemployment is measured is, is uh, based on people who are looking for work. So those, those uh, employees or workers that have been discouraged or they're fatigued from looking for jobs are no longer counted as being unemployed. Right. While um, our inflation is just not increasing very much. Uh, and for that reason, that's why the Fed is going slow. The, uh, but I think it's likely we're going to see a quarter point gain uh, interest rate increase at the end of this year. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us.